back. This is Boomer Life on Sea Isle 650. This is Boomer Life on Sea Isle 650. Who let the dogs out? Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Who let the dogs out? Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Who let the dogs out? Oh, and you just knew that one was coming this morning, didn't you? Here on Boomer Life on Sea Isle 650, as uh, our our guest just lit right up, just started dancing uh, in, simultaneously, as a matter of fact. With uh, and our our guests are Rhonda Hebert and Tamara Morin from Pampered Pets Ultrasonic. Uh, in well, I was going to say in in Delta, but my gosh, you're all over British Columbia, 34 locations province wide, uh, and we're talking about uh, dogs and cats and their teeth and cleaning and. And when we do the Christmas show in a few weeks, we'll talk more about toys and 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 gifts and and things uh, of the season that dogs and cats respond to well and not so well. But there's one toy that we can talk about now because this is a toy that uh, we see people using a lot, and it's the tug of war toy, Rhonda. And you're not a big fan of this. A lot of people like to play, especially with dogs with a fairly powerful grip. And you know, you get a you get a good the dog gets a good grip on that that, that toy and you get the other half and sometimes growling goes on and the dog can actually be lifted up off its feet and spun in a circle if you if you know what you're doing not that i i do but i've seen people do it so i mean it's fun and the, and, and all of, it's very energetic and the dog seems to enjoy it except uh, you have a huge frown on your face because you don't you see negative consequences from this behavior when i see that kind of thing happening i actually stop it because if you start that with your dog as a puppy, just think of baby teeth that are coming in and then the adult teeth are coming in and they're not quite strong. You pulling with any kind of device is going to cause those teeth to shift. We've seen dogs where their canines are sideways because of pulling games. So if you're going to introduce something like that to your dog, do it at a later age. And even at a later age, it causes aggression issues yeah. because that dog thinks it's playing a game with you. And if that dog wins, it's winning one over you. Mm -hmm. So you always have to win. And to win, you have to be aggressive and you need to take it away. So there's parts about damage. There's parts about aggression. Mm -hmm. There's parts about your dog thinking it's one up on you. There's a whole bunch of training mechanisms and for the teeth of the dog that but tug of war is not a good game. So interesting that you. That I, I'm glad I asked because it, it's uh, it's considered, and a lot of it gets put down by guys, particularly. Well, you know, um, this, it's a dog. It needs to have strong teeth, and you know, this is just my way of making sure that this dog has strong teeth. And in fact, what you're doing is making your dog's going to have buck teeth. If anything. exactly. Exactly. That's not, not, maybe they're strong, but they're going to look a little odd. And they're going to be terrible to clean. I guess, huh? So just uh, any of those, uh, so those sorts of that, that uh, man versus animal pull, Absolutely. pull, pull is not a recommended scenario. Anytime you create aggression in your dog is not a good scenario. You need to squash aggression. Okay. Interesting. And, and you know, and a, a lot of a lot of dog owners don't get that. No, they, they don't know, Stu. That's well, the thing. Uh, well, and a lot of them are, are kind of proud that they have aggressive dogs. A lot of people get dogs. Not, I mean, uh, people get dogs because they need to have their property guarded. That's fine. That's we a, fine. We, I mean, we had a guard dog. I mean, uh, and, and you don't have to, I mean, a guard dog, like a shepherd or others, they know their job. They know Absolutely. their job. Absolutely. They and don't need to be taught. They do not. So, uh, and you don't have to train a dog like that to be aggressive. It's automatically, it, it's in the DNA. Mm -hmm. This is my territory. I'm here to protect it. What's your problem? And that's sort and of And why the way, are you here? That's exactly it. So there's no need to up the aggression level, is there? Especially when you can't dissipate it. Right. If you're just teaching it aggression and not teaching it that it's going to lose and that it's the dog, you're teaching it to have re resistance against you, the owner. Right. I've had, I can't tell you how many people I know that are scared of their dog. Is that right? Oh, every second. Well, one. you know, it's interesting. I, I've heard uh, of, of, of an instance, for example, where the, a couple has a dog and she'll say, oh, it's his dog. Dog won't do anything for me. It's all about him. And, and the dog won't come to me, ignores me, won't behave me, and or won't behave for me, etc. And it's almost like uh, an alien living in my house. And, and I hear that a lot. It's it's her dog or it's his dog. It's not our dog. Most of the time, dogs pick one person. Yeah. 
And, and, and I know it's that sort of alpha persona thing that's built into their DNA, too, isn't it? Well, it's... <laughs> they're dogs, pack animals. And they're not quite that smart when it comes to the pack mentality. It's who <laughs> feeds them. That's who true. Who feeds them and takes care of them. Right. That's their pack leader. Uh, do we occasionally uh, bestow too much intelligence capabilities on our dogs? No. We never give our dogs enough credit. Really? Never. Okay. I've seen old dogs do the most amazing things. I've seen young dogs do the stupidest things. Okay. Dogs are profoundly smart. Profoundly smart. They can detect cancers. They can detect epilepsy in people. They're trained as guide dogs. There's no limit to what your dog can do. I meant to mention this when we were beginning the program. Uh, both, uh, both of my guests, both Rhonda and Tamara, are in addition to being experienced ultrasonic uh, service providers in terms of cleaning teeth for dogs and cats and so on. Both of you are formally, fully trained uh, animal paramedics. Yes, we've received our training through Dog Safe and we are certified level 1 and 2 uh, emergency response responders. Did you see the story? This happened in Coquitlam a couple of days ago. There was a house fire, so the fire department shows up and they they get everybody all the humans out of the house, but as is and this happens firefighters will tell you this happens all the time. The people get out on the street and somebody screams, "Oh my god, the dog's still in the house." So a very plucky firefighter decides, "Oh, well, okay," and goes into the house grabs the dog uh, they and, and brings it out so it's with the people now but the dog's in pretty tough shape lots of uh, smoke inhalation and that sort of thing so they put the dog in an ambulance and administer CPR while taking it to the hospital. Absolutely. We, uh, Corey had this story on the morning show just a few days ago and I'm sitting there and I'm listening to her tell the story and I'm going hey I know a couple of people could have handled that situation. Absolutely. Animal Absolutely. paramedics. And and there's such a need because dogs are people too. Mm -hmm. And you have the the firefighters were able to provide, they had a, some kind of customized oxygen mask that they were able to give this, this small, it was a Shih Tzu, I think. Yeah. Uh, they were able to give it uh, oxygen while en route to the ambulance. The firefighter said, in my 35 years in the service, I've never taken a creature to the hospital before. Well, <laughs> sometimes those dogs are more impeached important to the people than, than their family members. Well, and mercifully, all the people involved in the fire got out safe and sound. So then, and only then, of course, then the, the priority becomes the dog. And uh, fortunately, the dog made it too. That's, That's a wonderful story. But dog story. paramedics, have you, have you received, do you get calls for, for that uh, aspect of your training? We get questions on it because we're proud of it and it's on our website. We get, what do you mean you're, you know, you can... You're a dog paramedic or exactly. you're a dog first responder. Right. And we just tell them, we've been trained, we've, we can assess your dog's needs, and we can get it to the safety of your veterinarian. Tamara, let's go over this list that you have provided. Thank you for the homework on this, too. The benefits of sedation-free ultrasonic teeth cleaning. This is what you do, the, the essence of the business, expanding as rapidly as it is across the province. And you ask Rhonda, she'll take it right across Canada, just give it Absolutely. half a chance. She so would love it. let's talk about... <laughs> Well, let's talk about the benefits, and it begins with you two, you experienced oral hygienists. There's a lot of many good benefits uh, with the sedation-free teeth cleaning. You know, one, there is no sedation, and you get the love of me and Rhonda uh, for your animal, uh, your dog or cat. You know, there's, there's lots of natural products that we use, lots of different techniques and touches that we use, and the machine that we use is an ultrasonic machine, um, which is just water and vibration, so it just glasses across so there's no poking or mm -hmm. prodding right. no, no severe damage being done because uh, there are tools out there that can cause enamel defects and problems within the dog's teeth if done you know not properly right. so with the proper training and everything like that you know you'll have great service great great things for your dog um, and then we do a lot of maintenance and maintenance products as well and a lot of recommendations okay Carry on with the list here, Rhonda. I, and the fact that it, the, the, a typical appointment would last somewhere between, what, one and two hours? Typically two hours. And the nice thing I like is there's no age limit. The older the dog, we take the more attention. And there's no blood tests needed because we there's don't no need... There's no sedation. There's no sedation, right. so blood tests are needed. No needles Not at all, Not needed right? at all. And your preventative care at home is made.
made easy, written out, and formulated specifically for your dog. Earlier in the program, we had an email question from Stephanie in Tawasin, which you were able to answer, Rhonda. And uh, you also reminded us at that time of an offer that you have. Stephanie's question was to us at pets at CIL650.com. And each program uh, going forward, we're going to take some of your emails and respond to them. And one person who sends us an email, as Stephanie uh, was the case with her the, today, one person's going to win a prize. And the Absolutely. prize is... She's going to win a free sedation-free teeth cleaning. But what I'm proposing to the other listeners of CIL 650 is if they can call in and they mention the radio show, they can get a $50 off their teeth cleaning. Oh, really? Every single customer of, and or every single listener of Sea Isle. Interesting, because Inga, whom we talked to earlier, was listening to the show a few weeks ago and just uh, randomly thought, well, these people sound like they know what they're doing, and you ended up dealing with six of yes, her, her animals. Did, yes. So, uh, yeah, and, and so any Sea Isle 650 listener who uh, would uh, like to avail themselves of the services of Pampered Pets Ultrasonic will get a bit of a discount. Absolutely. Nothing wrong with that at all. Nothing. Nothing. Rhonda Hebert and uh, Tamara Morin, uh, thanks so much for coming in you busy busy people it's nice that you uh, squeeze an hour for us er, once a month it's great to see you again thank you it was thank you very much much. pampered pets ultrasonic.com friends check it out we'll see you next time here on boomer life